Adam with Home Theater Forum here. I'm talking with Juan Peralta of Skywalker Sound. So you mixed uh, The Art of Flight in 7.1. Yes. Is this one of the first mixes you've done in 7.1? No. Um, I, I've worked on Tron Legacy, uh, and that was a 7.1. I'm not sure if I did a film before Tron that was 7.1. But um, I, So I've had some experience with 7.1 before. What does mixing in 7.1 give you as a sound mixer mm -hmm. above working with 5.1? Well, it, it gives us definitely more flexibility when it comes to placing sounds in the surrounds. Whereas uh, with the 5.1 systems, you only have two zones. Now with 7.1, you have four zones. So you can make some uh, more creative decisions about sound effects and um, panning stuff around the room or where you want it to be placed, either on the side wall or directly behind you or both. So um, it gives it gives a little more flexibility when it comes to placing stuff behind you and, and wrapping wrapping around the audience a little bit better. Can you give us some examples of both Tron or the Art of Flight with with how you use that back channel? Oh yeah, I mean on Art of Flight, a lot of the helicopter stuff that we were panning around the room was done um, using 7.1 and strategically just using either a side wall with the helicopters coming from the side of the of the screen. And if it's coming from directly behind you, then we have the, the back surrounds to use on that as well. And in Tron, you know, we used it everywhere in that movie, really called for it. And I think it you know, was a great platform for it uh, with all the visual effects and all the special effects on that. Light cycles and, you know, light sh uh, what is it? Um, I forget the name of it now, but... Uh, uh, the light ships at the end. I mean, you know, it's a lot of fun panning all that stuff around. <laughs> uh, and then what would you say that um, with the fact that the consumers can get lossless audio at home with formats like Dolby True HD, yeah. does that make you have to kind of step up your game when it comes time to doing the mix? No, that actually makes us very happy. Um, traditionally, we've been mixing um, in a 24-bit 48K raw audio files, and every time from that point on, before it went to DVD, there was compression. And before it went to the theater, there was compression. And so the, the quality was never what we were used to hearing throughout the working on the film part. We work on a film for you know two or three months, painstakingly trying to get the mix just right. And then uh, when it comes time to print master it, you have to compress it. And you know, the compression that Dolby Digital provided was actually a very good compression for the time, but now with Dolby True HD, it just makes us even more happier. Now what we're hearing here is exactly what you're going to hear at home on the Blu-ray. Get your 7.1 decoder um, amplifier going, get the speakers, and it's going to be the closest it's ever been. Uh, what we saw on the theatrical version of uh flight movie was mm -hmm. a really aggressive mix is that yeah. the same exact mix that you're using on the blu-ray yes it's exactly the same mix and that that's one of the cool things about it it's an aggressive mix um it's um something that the director wanted it to be that way and um in the back of his mind the film was going to play in these really big auditoriums and really big concert hall settings and so he was always wanting to push the envelope and try to fill the room. So that's kind of where this mix comes from a little bit. And, um, but um, I hear that it translates really well to the Blu-ray and the home theater, so. Yeah. Great, and you've also done some animated films. Do you approach yeah. live action and animated the same way when you're mixing? Um, yeah, well, we approach it the same way, but animation is sometimes a little more tedious and a little more involved where you know, for an animated film, there is no production sound, right? So uh, one of the things that happens when you work on a live action film is that you will have um, what the microphone picks up on set. You'll have some air, you'll have birds, and you'll have some nice sounds that kind of um, help you sell the environment that they're in. When it comes to a, a 3D animated film, there is none of that. All the dialogue is recorded in a studio environment. So trying to convey the space where they are at the moment, either they're outside or inside or in a car and all that, becomes a little more tedious because now we have to create that from scratch. There is no 
guide track to go from. There was no production guide track to go from or listen to what the car actually sounded like. Okay, so now let's make the, we, we can get a, um, a sound effect that's close to that sounding, that car. Well, we don't have that blueprint anymore. So basically everything has to be recreated from scratch. So it's a little, it's a little of a more tedious job. I wouldn't say it's a longer job, but you know, it's, that's the difference between the approaches, I think. Great. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, Congratulations pleasure. on an outstanding mix. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.